don't know why. I don't know. I've, I've loved it ever since I was little. I don't know something about the nature with it. Uh, just you know, being able to sit back, relax, have a good time with your friends. Most of the time you forget about everything else that's going on in life. Seeing the kids, the families, everybody coming together and having a good time. That's why we love this boat here because a lot of times you get families and big groups of people that really want to come out and just have a good time. It's more than fishing. But fishing has always been a huge part of my blood. If you talk to any of my family, any of my cousins growing up with them, they'll tell you that that's all, that's all I ever wanted to do is go fishing. And it's, it's just, it is a huge part of me. And I love sharing it with other people. Panama City Beach is located on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico in Florida's Panhandle region. It's an area well known for spring break and its beautiful white sand beaches. Over the past 15 years, Panama City has endured an incredible set of challenges. From the BP oil spill in 2010 to Hurricane Michael in 2018, and more recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite this, commercial, recreational, and charter fishing has persevered with thousands of locals making a living from the Gulf of Mexico. One of these boats is the Jubilee, and they've been doing it for over 20 years. Here, I met Captain Brandon Kenimore and his mates Colby, Everett, Dutch, and Dwayne, and joined them and their crew of 50 passengers on an eight hour day of fishing on the Gulf of Mexico. With such a large crew, I was interested to see how the mates prepared for their day they arrived early to make sure everything was in order before guests arrived, prepped rods, tied rigs, and began cutting bait. It wasn't long before the dock was full of people, and it was time for Captain Brandon to address his crew for the day. On the ride out, I hopped into the bridge with Brandon to learn more about the party boat fishing on the Gulf of Mexico. here and stop where we're at now and you can steal somebody's fishing spot that's 15 miles away yeah it's, it's pretty crazy it is that's for sure just the technology so uh, you know the trolling motors the uh trolling motors themselves like 10 years ago you used to have to have some kind of skill to be able to catch fish you know, you at least had to be able to hold the boat still or know how to anchor and all that stuff like that. But yeah. now, now you come out here and push a button and the boat does all the work. You know, the boat stops you there and you don't move. So, yeah. so you know, you sit there and you, a lot of people just wipe out those spots. If I run over a spot and I'm not paying attention, I see it on a plotter, it's, it's a ways behind us. It's like, it's a little different, but like the technology now is like you can pause it you can back up yep. and you can be like, oh man, I missed that big show of fish. It's two miles behind us, but I'm gonna I'm gonna click on it and it'll save that spot, even though it's two miles behind you. It keeps it all all the information. Yeah, you know, if you talk to any any boat captain down here, they'll tell you, you know, even the charter boat captains, like they they used to make a lot of money on short trips, six hour trips, you know, you run two of them a day. Yeah. You can come out here and you catch a limit of snappers, a grouper or two, and a limit of bee liners. It's like now it's like you talk to a lot of charter boat captains, they hate running six hour trips. They're like, I don't I don't want to run anything minimum than an eight. It's like you can't catch yes. no fish. It's not worth it. You know? Yeah. If they run a six hour, you know, they used to run for an hour and a half 
They're like, well, now on the six hours, we're going to run for two hours. You get two hours fishing out, or two hour ride out, two hours fishing, two hour ride back in. Yeah. So you also lose fishing time, but that's just in order for them to justify trying to justify the money, you know, they have to get out there and catch the fish. I tell them all the time, so you got good days and you got bad days. It was just two trips ago, three trips ago, we had, we had a tough one. And I think the trip before that, we had caught our limit of a vermilion snapper on the whole boat. On the whole boat. We, had like, we had like 300 beeliners, we had like 30 people. And we had other, other species with it. Said. It's fishing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, just getting to our first fishing area here. We're going to see if we can locate us some fish. But uh, let's go ahead and find your fishing spot, get baited up, get ready. Just don't drop it. I tell you, I got to get us. Right over top of these fish, I'm gonna get the wind and current figured out and all that good stuff. But going over a couple things with you real quick about the fishing. First of all, is uh, these fish, you know, they don't jump on the hooks, guys. You gotta work at it. You gotta figure out that bite. You gotta make sure you're right dead on that bottom with a tight line. It's extremely important. You know, if you're six inches or six feet up, you're not gonna catch. You end up catching more neighbors than fish. So make sure you're right dead on that bottom tight line is extremely critical and uh, you're going to see some people that fish with us quite often they got it figured out you know they catch fish after fish after fish but, uh, when you feel it just pull up or start reeling don't yank don't snatch don't build dancing as we call it don't bass fish it you get a fish on top holler fish on you get a tangle holler tangle and remember guys my deckhands are here to make sure you have a great day but one thing they cannot do is read your mind so talk to them let them know what's yeah. going on i'm gonna get us over the top of these fish so be baited up, be ready, just don't drop yet. They're there, it's just seems like they're scattered out. Like all these spots. I know there's there's fish here. It just seems like seems like they're scattered out. They're not all gathered up. So we might have to sit here. Get on one of these big pieces of bottom and drop down some bait and see if they gather up for us. Oh yeah. Looks like good quality there. I'm thinking that's the right flavor. I'm going to be dealing more with current than wind. Always the first time, you always got to push you around a little bit until you get it dialed in. Keep going to the north. Alright, send them on down right there. See if I can get this wind and current figured out. Looks pretty good all through here. Kind of scattered out. So it might take a little while to get a good bite going, but I think we can get them going pretty good. Looks like good quality fish. Send them down, see what we can get.
that we can't thank y'all enough for going with us today. Really hope y'all enjoyed it. And uh, we should have the fish cleaning done within an hour. But if you do need to drop off your fish and come back and get them tomorrow, I will have them iced down and on the Jubilee. And as long as you can pick them up, probably between 10 and 12 tomorrow. Should be just fine. Should be able to get it to you. Besides that, like I said, we're going to get you docked up and keep all your hands and everything clear of the rails for while we're coming into dock. All righty, everybody. We want to thank you guys again for our appreciation of y'all coming out here with us today, y'all. We definitely killed some fish. Good Lord. Y'all could not ask for more beautiful weather, better captain, better crew, all that good stuff. I'm just kidding. Y'all, again, thank you for coming with us. When you're coming off the boat, make sure you watch that step. I know some of y'all want to kiss a tree, but do not kiss the dock, all right? Watch that step coming off the boat. Wait for your numbers when they're called, guys. I want to thank you again for coming with us. Twenty-three, number. 